This presentation is about Mokopea's 2014 cruise through the South Pacific. Uh, this particular photo was taken when we were at anchor off of the Four Seasons Resort on the Motu there off of Bora Bora. I'd sailed through the South Pacific on four previous occasions, but somehow managed to miss two of the real gems of the area, uh, Vavau Tonga, which is here south of Samoa, and Ivavai in the Austral Islands, which is about 400 miles south of Tahiti. We also decided on this cruise we'd stop along the way in Christmas Island and Suvarov Atoll before we got to Tonga, and then in uh, Tahiti on the way back from Raivavai. We left uh, Honolulu in April, right at the end of the hurricane season in the South Pacific, and timed it so that we'd be out of there by about the 1st of November when the hurricane season starts up again. I prefer making passages with just two people on Mokupea. It's really quite comfortable. Each one of us gets our own private half stateroom, and you really don't need more than two to sail the boat. So for the trip south, it was Rocky Young here on the left in this photo and myself. Um, my wife, Lori, who's standing between Rocky and, and me in the photo, she can't sail with me because she gets seasick. So she gets the princess treatment and gets to fly everywhere. Uh, on the right of the photo there is Rocky's uh, wife, Darlene. Lori and I have developed a tradition that every time I sail away from Kaneohe for the South Pacific, she'll rush up to Makapu Lighthouse and wave a flag from the lookout on top. So I'll be able to see her one last time as we sail away over the horizon. She took this photo um, as Mokupea sailed by. You can just see us out here on a gorgeous day, um, heading for uh, Christmas Island. Here we are aboard the mighty Mokupea, zipping along about 300 miles north of Christmas Island. Trades have finally filled in after almost a week of pretty much drifting along in ideal conditions. Wind is down a little bit now, but it was up earlier. But we're broad reaching along, just comfortable as can be. Uh, got three reefs in the main and a very rolled up jib here, but we're off the wind and comfortable doing over seven knots. Just sailing along here in the North Pacific. This is pretty typical conditions. Got a few birds, caught a fish yesterday. Autopilot here steering the boat, doing a great job. Got the wind generator up there, generating power along with our solar panels. So we haven't had to run the engine for power at all. Have our backup self-steering vane there that we haven't had to use. Here's a puff. Good conditions up here, a little water on deck, but not too bad. North Pacific Ocean. About 50 miles north of Christmas Island in the intertropical convergent zone. You can see the very funky looking clouds out there. Or we've had wind, look at there's a, some kind of a squall up there, big one, dark thing. We've had winds. 150 degree wind shifts. It's real light now. We're just drifting along trying to work our way through this to uh, get to Christmas by tomorrow morning. Here's a doldrums sunset. We're about 30 miles north of Christmas Island. Stuck right smack dab in the doldrums. You can see the squalls all around us. Not much wind. We're just drifting here waiting for the right time when we'll probably turn the engine on so we can arrive at Christmas first thing in the morning. Here's the Christmas Island anchorage off of the town of London, their big metropolis here. We're in about uh, 25 feet sand bottom, nice little holding. There's the entrance to the lagoon at Christmas, the largest atoll in the world. And you can just see way up in the distance, that's the far side of the lagoon panning out now. We've got offshore here, we've got a uh, raft up going on. Uh, fishing boats of some kind, we're told that they're getting uh, seaweed at Fanning Island. 
It looks like they're here for maintenance or something because workers are coming and going all the time to work on them. There's a couple of fishermen out here off the beach. Down the coast you can see the pier where we uh, cleared customs about a mile and a half down. That's where the customs likes to come aboard to clear you. And as we pan back around to London. This is a chart showing uh, Christmas Island, the largest atoll in the world, at least in terms of land area. Um, Christmas was used as Great Britain's nuclear uh, test site in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, so they developed the island back then. They have since walked away from it, um, but there's a lot of ruins left over from that period. And they uh, named the, the main towns there. You can see London up here in the north and Paris down here south of that after their cities in Europe. Mokopea is anchored uh, right where this boat is shown on the chart here on the western side of the atoll, uh, which is totally protected from the prevailing uh, easterly winds that uh, uh, blow in this part of the world. Here's a closer look at those three large ships that were anchored behind Mokopea at Christmas Island. That middle ship is some kind of a factory ship where they take the seaweed and package it or can it for storage and sale. Rocky and I didn't like Christmas Island very much. Uh, first, the customs officials made us stand by for a day and a half before they would come aboard to uh, clear us into the island. And um, after a day and a half of waiting, we went ashore and we found that there really wasn't very much there on Christmas Island. Uh, there's, besides that little bit of fishing industry, um, the only other uh, activity there is a little bit of uh, ecotourism with bone fishing in the lagoon. So there really wasn't a lot going on. And after another day and a half of messing about there, we decided to leave and um, head south for uh, Suvorov. Here's a, just a couple of kids playing on the beach where we would land Mokupea's dinghy. Of course, when you head south from Christmas, you got to cross the equator. And sure enough, uh, it turns out that we had a polywog on board. So here's King Neptune coming aboard as we uh, cross the equator to initiate uh, poor Rocky. Um, he, he took it pretty easy on Rocky, um, but uh, we did have a pretty nice party. We're just leaving Christmas Island behind. Don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch, big bunch of birds back there working a school of fish right off Southwest Point, Christmas Island. You can see Christmas Island there fading off in the distance. See the green clouds over the island? That's the sun reflecting off the sands in the shallow lagoon, making the island, making the clouds look green. That's how the, one way of finding these islands is you, as you sail along, you can look up and see the green clouds and you know there's a lagoon underneath it. Here we are aboard the mighty Mokupea, sailing along here. 16 degrees south, just coming up on Suvorov Atoll. And uh, we, you can see one of the Motus out there in the distance. There's Anchorage Island right ahead of us. Double Reef, Maine. We've had a real tough day today. And there's Turtle Island out there. And uh, very tough day with squalls and wind up, wind down. We drifted around for an hour, trying desperately to get in here to Suvorov before dark tonight. And then we'll get there about four o'clock, looks like. It's about 3.30 now. So you can see it's kind of rough out here. We've had some big seas, confused seas, but all's well that ends well. Just, just anchored in Suvorov Atoll. I don't know if you can see it. There's four sharks right behind us here. There's another one. As soon as we anchored, the sharks are right around the boat. So the thought is, look at them all. Three or four foot long, black tips. Deja, it's deja vu all over again, just like uh, last time I was here. So I'm thinking maybe we're not gonna wanna do a heck of a lot of swimming. Look at these guys. 
Look at them coming in here. Look at all those. Look at them. Look at them. Holy schmoly. Look at those guys. Look at that. Wow. So we just anchored here. Suvorov Atoll. Here's Anchorage Island. Just dropped the hook. Got two other cruising boats. Got a catamaran and uh, looks like a Juno over there. Or a hunter. I don't know. So here we are, Suvarov Atoll, just about 4.15 in the afternoon. We made it just in time. We've got to anchor down in a good spot, lots of sand. And there's a shallow spot back here, but I think it's deep enough. I don't intend to go there. And I'm very happy. We're happy, aren't we, Rocky? Oh, that's fantastic. And now, and our sharks are happy, and now it's Miller time. This is an aerial photograph of Suvorov Atoll in the northern Cook Islands. Uh, Suvorov is a typical um, atoll. It's about seven miles um, across the lagoon. Uh, it's got a, a fringing coral reef um, with a bunch of uh, small islands or motus on that reef. The, the largest uh, motu is Anchorage Island right here uh, inside the uh, only entrance into the lagoon on the eastern side. Now Suvorov is famous uh, for its hermit, Tom Neal, who lived on the island off and on between 1952 and 1977. He wrote a book about it called An Island to Oneself. It's an excellent read if you ever get a chance to find it or come across it. Um, anyway, the, fir the first time I went to Suvorov was in 1986 which was nine years after Tom Neal died, and his house on Suvorov um, had been maintained by visiting Yasmin as a shrine. Um, when I sailed up and anchored in the island, there was no other boats there, nobody on the island. But we went ashore, walked up the path to Tom Neal's house, and uh, his machete was hanging over his bed, and uh, it was just chicken skin. It was a surreal experience. We had the island to ourselves for two weeks, it was a, just a surreal experience. Um, things have changed since then. Um, the Cook Islands government now sends uh, government reps out there to collect money from visiting yachts. Um, but there are still remnants of Tom Neal's house there. And this bust is there uh, commemorating um, his life on the islands. So it's, a, it's still a magical place. Here's a photo of Rocky um, ashore on the beach there at, at Suvorov. Uh, it's just, it's a magical island, maybe a quarter mile long um, by 100 yards wide. As you can see the beautiful beach, there's another um, boat's dinghy coming ashore at the time. Um, just, just a wonderful, wonderful place. After a few days at Suvorov, uh, we took off and uh, headed west for our uh, next stop, Neo Toputapu in the northern Tongan group. Um, it was during that sail we had uh, one of our two significant uh, problems on the voyage, and that was with my house batteries. They, they weren't holding a charge, and it was causing my refrigerator and autopilot to trip off. It took me a couple of months to figure out what was going, going wrong, but it, it turns out that one of the two deep cycle batteries shown here in the picture that were brand new was had a bad cell in it, and that the fact that it was hooked up in parallel with a good battery was masking the problem. So it took me uh, quite a while to diagnose what was going on with it. And I, I also refused to believe that a brand new battery could be bad, but uh, sure enough, one of them was bad. Um, and at first I thought it was wiring and I spent many hours and watches uh, jumping wiring circuits to try and uh, diagnose the problem. The other significant problem we had was once we got into Neo Topu Tapu, um, I discovered that the uh, headstay at the top of the mast was stranding. You can see here uh, four broken, broken strands at the top of the headstay. I went up to the top of the mast in Neo Topu Tapu just to do a rig check and discovered this problem. So we limped um, the 150 miles south to uh, Vavau Tonga uh, under mainsail alone. Um, uh, where we could finally get it fixed. Uh, fortunately, Lori was going to be flying in uh, a week later and she brought with her uh, a brand new headstay to fix this broken one. 
Uh, here we are on Niwatopu Tapu, which is a lovely little island group uh, in the northern end of Tonga. Uh, this is the international airport uh, there in Niwatopu Tapu. You can see our transportation are the folding bikes we carry aboard Mokopea. And uh, over here on the left, this is the official lawnmower of the international airport. Here we are uh, at anchor off one of the Motus, uh, right off the main island there in Neo Topo Tapu. A gorgeous place. Uh, they got uh, damaged quite badly in a tsunami in 2011, uh, uh, three years earlier, and they were uh, still recovering from that tsunami. This chart shows the Vavao archipelago in the country of Tonga. It's one of our primary uh, destinations for the voyage. It's just a stunningly beautiful area, about 100 square miles. It's about 10 miles wide by uh, 10 miles long. About 60 islands, um, most of them uninhabited. Nearly everyone has a white sand beach. Um, it is uh, protected um, on the south by reefs and on the east by reefs. And then along the north and the west, it's got these barrier islands that knock down the seas. So it's uh, very, very calm waters here cruising around in the middle of the group. Um, the uh, channels between the islands are extremely deep, about 300 feet. So during the uh, southern hemisphere winter, which is our cruising time down there, uh, the humpback whales migrate north from the Antarctic and they spend, just like in Hawaii during our winter, uh, in the southern hemisphere winter, the Antarctic humpback whales come up and they spend their, their winter in the uh, Favau group. So there's whales everywhere. It's just a stunningly beautiful um, island group. It's geologically, it's all uplifted coral, so that also makes it very uh, unique and interesting. Here's Rocky with a couple of friends he made on uh, uh, Lape Island where we went for a Tongan feast. As I mentioned, the uplifted coral uh, geology makes for some very interesting features. This is called Swallow's Cave. And here's a view of Mokopea from inside Swallow's Cave. We took the dinghy deep deep inside the cave there, really pretty neat. It, even though Mokopea is only about oh, a couple hundred feet um, outside the entrance of the cave, the water is nearly 300 feet deep where the boat is. And here's another shot of Rocky right there outside Swallow's Cave. We bumped into this boat in Suvorov and then again in Vavau Tonga and became pretty close pals with their crew. Uh, on this particular day, they were just getting ready to leave, um, heading west with the Around the World Rally. And uh, they, they yelled to us and said, hey, you guys heading for French Polynesia? Where they had just come from. We said, yeah. So they pulled alongside and they threw us an envelope full of French Polynesian francs because uh, they weren't going to need it anymore where they were going. Um, we waved goodbye and they headed off and later on we opened the envelope and found about $40 in there. It pays to make friends while you're cruising. This is one of only three small boat piers in the main port city of Niafu in Vavau Tonga. It belongs to the mooring uh, charter boat company and we made pretty good pals with the uh, manager of the company Raymond. He let us come alongside one day to uh, drop our headstay and replace it with a new headstay. You can just see right there on the dock here's our old and new headstays. Uh, old ones down and the new ones getting ready to go back up. Uh, fortunately uh, he let us do that otherwise we would have had a real hard time uh, putting up the new headstay. Here's uh, Rocky, Raymond, and I trying to get the pin in the headstay, the new headstay, as we're putting it up on the boat. This shot kind of reminds me of the uh, planting of the flag on Mount uh, Suribachi on Iwo, Iwo Jima there. Um, behind Rocky on the left there is Mount Talao. That's the 425 feet. That's the highest point in Vavao. One of the must-see experiences when uh, cruising in Vavao is a dive into Mariner's Cave on Nuapapu Island. Uh, it's a basically a hole in the cliff, uh, about eight feet underwater that you dive into, uh, goes in about 15 feet, then comes up into a big air bubble. 
uh, that's trapped uh, in the middle of the island there. It's very disconcerting to dive into that cave for the first time. I found this photo on the internet. It shows a diver right there at the entrance of the cave, and you can see the, the air bubble um, up in there. Uh, it's uh, lots of fun. And here's a video I shot of Rocky and I diving into Mariner's Cave. Actually upside down now looking up at the air bubble. The only light in the cave comes in from the uh, entrance there from the outside. It's almost 300 feet deep there, too deep to anchor, so Lori is powering the Mokopea around while Rocky and I do our diving. And here comes Rocky. Awesome. Rocky, Lori, and I cruised through Vavau together, exploring islands for about two weeks or so, and then Rocky had to get home. So he flew out, and Lori and I spent the next two and a half months just exploring the uh, lovely uh, islands around the group. It was relaxing, and he here we are just wandering along a secluded beach on an empty island. We pulled into one little anchorage and found a floating art gallery called the Ark Gallery, A-R-K, like Noah's Ark. And there we met Larry and Sherry, uh, seen here in the picture. Um, we got to talking, and uh, I, Larry said, where are you from? We said, we're from Hawaii. And he said, oh, do you know uh, Dave Ailing? And I said, well, yeah, I bought my boat from Dave Ailing. And he said, well, I delivered Dave Ailing's boat from Tahiti to Hawaii um, in, uh, I think it was the year 2000. And I said, well, his boat's anchored about 100 yards over there. So it turns out it's a pretty small world. This is Kanutu Island, one of our favorite secluded anchorages um, on the eastern side of the group. You can see Lori there uh, tending the bonfire. We're actually burning our garbage. Uh, the, the country uh, encourages you to burn your garbage as a way of getting rid of it. There's no uh, municipal uh, waste disposal system um, in Vavau, so burning your garbage is the best way to deal with it. Here, Lori and I are exploring a sinkhole on Umuna Island. Uh, that's the island right next to Kanutu. And the fishing was uh, pretty good in Vavau, uh, Tonga there. We, most of the other boats didn't have much luck, but we had some great lures and uh, caught a couple of these really good eating Spanish mackerel. And of course, the sunsets are spectacular. This is one of our favorite anchorages uh, in Port Morel. This is Mr. Bentley. He's the owner of the Bounty Bar in uh, Niafu, one of our favorite hangouts. Mr. Bentley lets uh, Lawrence, um, his, his human, do most of the work while he supervises. And here's another shot of the Bounty Bar uh, from out in the harbor. That's me on the far right there looking out over the balcony. And here's my view from the balcony there of the Bounty Bar looking out at the boats sitting at either at anchor or on moorings uh, there in uh, Port of Refuge Harbor, Niafu. And here's another view of the anchorage there at Niafu. This is uh, looking down from Mount Talao. Uh, the highest point in the island that we saw in one of the earlier pictures. Kanutu Island is off there in the distance. 
And here's a pretty interesting looking uh, front or storm rolling into the area. There's not a whole lot of money uh, down there in uh, Vavao. The people are pretty poor, so they have to make do. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. Some guy took this uh, uh, trailer top for a uh, pickup truck and turned it into a cabin on his outboard. We rented a car one day and drove around the main line of Vavao to do some exploring. There's a church on er nearly every corner and pigs everywhere. So this photograph sums it up pretty well. This is the king's favorite island, Nuku, um, behind Lori and I. Here's Mokopea just about to enter the Hunga Lagoon. It's a, about a one mile diameter lagoon, completely landlocked, except for this uh, 50 yard wide uh, channel. Um, into the lagoon. You have to time it just right with the tide because uh, it rushes in and rushes out. So you want to get there at slack water so um, it isn't too treacherous uh, coming and going. And uh, uh, here's Mokopea heading in. And here we are just, just having come through the pass. You can see the water swirling as it uh, rushes in and out of the lagoon. So we didn't quite time slack water perfectly, but you can see it's not very wide. We went to a Tongan feast on the island of Vaka'etu, put on by David and his family here. Here's David with the guitar on the right and his, and his kids on the left uh, singing to us there at the Tongan feast. We knew something was up that morning when we heard a squealing pig uh, being killed. And uh, here it is uh, that same afternoon being roasted over the fire for the Tongan feast. One day we were anchored in Port Morrell and we looked up and saw this uh, catamaran heading in. At first it looked like a uh, you know, regular uh, catamaran, but if you'll look over here right on the stern of the boat, that's a person standing up right there. You know, proportionally it's just like any other catamaran, but this one turned out to be the largest sailing catamaran in the world. It's 147 foot long. Um, it's called the Hemisphere. This is Port Morel, Vavao Tonga. Just an unbelievably stunning anchorage. Totally protected from the southeast and easterly trades, which is what we have now. So the boat's aimed right to the east here, and you can see how the hillside protects us there. It's kind of a bowl of a bay. White sand beach, gorgeous anchorage. Just beautiful spot. We're anchored in about 28 feet, sand bottom. And it's a sandy beach to the east, rock cliffs to the north and south. To the west, it's open out towards the entrance. You can see that this is Mani Nita uh, Motu, the southernmost uh, island or Motu in the Vavao group sailed out here today. It's a gorgeous day. Look at all the seabirds up there above the island. I don't know if you can see them. But the first time we've seen tons of birds, but they're all seabirds. And uh, I'm aimed south here. There's nothing south of us but uh, open ocean and Ha'apai and the uh, Tonga Tapu group. And you can see we're tucked inside a reef here. So you can see waves breaking off there in the distance. And here's, here's the pass in. You can just see that uh, green colored water, very narrow cut through the reef there to get into this little anchorage. Uh, a couple more of the southernmost uh, motus in Vavao. And now as we pan to the north, you can see the main, main bunch of uh, islands in the Vavao group. So we've just sailed about 10 miles down here to the south just for the day, just in this nice little keyhole anchorage, uh, sand bottom, about 23 feet. We're surrounded by this is uh, Tapana Island, we're anchored at, sunset. I don't know if you can see those, what look like birds. Those aren't birds, those are bats migrating north uh, for the evening. 
Here we are ashore in Tonga. There's Lori Lloyd. And this beach is entirely made up of paper shells. So Lori Lloyd's in heaven. Another boat came in while we were ashore. There's the mighty Mokopea. And here's the anchorage at Tonga. Gorgeous beach. Whoa, look at that tail. Here we are, Lisa Beach, uh, 5th of August. These whales woke us up last night. They were so close to the boat. Now they're swimming around behind us. We're up the mast, replacing the Windex. You can see the jury rig here, holding it down, and the jury rig holding the top on. So Matt brought a new one down with him. We're going to put that on. But we're out here at Lisa Beach. There's Vicky out there paddling around. You can see Lisa Beach ashore there. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous spot here. We had uh, whales not probably 50 feet behind us last night, and then they were out there again this morning. They're gone at the moment. But uh, there's Mr. Dyer down there. And you can see the bottom here. Gorgeous anchorage. At Matt and Vicki Dyer uh, flew down and joined us for two weeks of cruising, and then uh, Lori and Vicki uh, flew home, and Matt and I uh, got the boat ready to sail east for Rivavai. Now, I knew this trip to the east was going to be the most challenging uh, part of the voyage. Uh, the trade winds blow from east to west right into our face. So that was gonna gonna make it difficult, but I also knew that uh, the ancient Polynesians uh, found a way to work their way to the east uh, in the tropical South Pacific. One thing we learned in our two and a half months in Tonga was that about every week or so, a low pressure system would come rolling by to the south, and the wind would shift to the west for a day or so before the the low went away and the trades filled back in. So our plan was to jump onto a low pressure system and ride it to the east as far as we could. Uh, we had uh, bailout points penciled in here at Beverage Reef, um, Aitutaki in the Cook Islands, and then on to Rivavai if we could make it. And if the weather wouldn't allow us to make it, then we would go up to Mopilia and then to Bora Bora in the Society Islands. Um, so that was our plan. Here's another sh shot that uh, a little bit clearer that shows what our intended course was. So Matt and I got the boat provisioned, checked out a customs, um, and headed out to Port Morel to wait for a low pressure system to come through. Uh, we watched the weather closely and we had to wait about a week uh, until we got the uh, what looked like ideal weather. Um, so when it came, we, we left uh, Port Morel, um, headed south to jump on the low, and this video shows what happened next. This is what the freeway looks like heading east. Down here in the uh, southern ocean here, or south part of the tropics. Pretty windy right now. Mid-20s, no, mid to high 20s. It was up near 30 earlier. Uh, sea is very confused. That's the real problem here. So we're zipping along. This is a north, this is a southwest breeze, very cold. Southwesterly, and we're heading uh, we're heading easterly. You can see we've got a triple reef main, and there's not much of a jib up at all. And we're still zipping along at six and a half, seven knots, but it's very windy, and uh, the confused, like I said, confused sea is the issue. And it's cold, real cold. You can see two, two sweatshirts on, long underwear, bunny slippers. It's uh, not real pleasant, but we're getting through it, and we're getting getting east. So this is uh, sunset, day three, on the freeway to Rivavai. 
blew like hell all day and now the wind's slowly backing off. Day five, Tonga to Raivavai and we're driving down the freeway here. This is day seven of the voyage from Bavao to Raivavai. We're headed due east in a northwesterly wind. Just screaming along here on a broad reach. Here comes an interesting front or squall or storm. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's coming. Here we are at 24 degrees south, heading due east with a westerly wind. We are on the north end of a low pressure area that's passing by to the south of us and it's giving us this very unusual westerly wind which is allowing us to streak towards Raivavai. You can see we're running wing and wing. The double reefed main and partially reefed jib it helps the autopilot to steer. We're just zipping along here at a little better than seven knots. Look at that hang 095. Can't beat it. Heading right for our destination. This is just what the doctor ordered. And uh, a little rocky rolly here. But this is, nobody could ask for anything more. And it looks like we may have this condition, or good condition similar to this, all the way into Rivavai. It's Mr. Dyer who just cooked us an outstanding yes, Simon sir. lunch. Simon I. Simon I. And uh, we are having the voyage of our lives here. Here we are, day eight, on our way from Favau to Raivavai, and we are still on the freeway. Still steaming along, downwind. Day nine? Here's day I think it's day nine. 28th, and look what we just, look what just came for a visit. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here's the uh, ahi that the boys caught today, what's left of it, just for perspective on how big it is. Nice freaking fish. Got a couple of uh, loins sitting there and just done cleaning it up now. Look at the size of that guy. He was no small boy. That's like about four feet long. We think he was probably 50 or 60. We have no idea. We have no scale. He was a big boy. Here we are, sunrise, August 30th, on the approach to Rivavai. Look at those beautiful peaks. We had to hove to overnight, wait to come in here, but we're working our way in here just at sunrise. We'll be going to the channel here in half an hour or so. Got our See, we got a little bit of company here. Looks like an inner island steamer coming on in. We're going to tuck in behind him and follow him right in. There goes our steamer. We're just follow following him in here. Can't think of a better way of doing that. If he don't go aground, we're not going aground. So what happened? Why did we have such a pleasant voyage? Well, normally these low pressure systems roll by to the south and they move at about 500 miles a day, which is much quicker than we can sail. But for some inexplicable and unforecast reason, our low pressure area, which you can you can just see the isobars here, it's actually down, down here, uh, so south of us, um, it slowed down and it started moving once it got south of Vival, once it got south of Vau here, it started moving at about 150 miles a day uh, to the east, which is about the same speed that Mokopea sails. So we managed to stay right with that low all the way from Vavau to Raivavai. In this particular uh, uh, screenshot of our uh, weather map here, you can see the wind. Uh, we're right about where the, the arrow is here. And you can see the low is just starting to get away from us as we approach uh, Raivavai. But we managed to be downwind almost all the way there. Here's another weather map uh, that shows pretty much the same thing. Here's our low pressure system. Here's Mokopea. Um, here's uh, Vavau Tonga. And here's Raivavai. It's just slowly starting to get away from us, but it's close enough that it's still giving us these westerly winds that are allowing us to, uh, to get to the east. It's interesting that if we, you can see how we, 
we headed south here uh, to get into this weather. If we had headed straight straight east from Niafo, we probably would have had trade winds the whole way and we wouldn't have been able to head downwind. So we were very fortunate. This is how we get um, all of our communications, do all our communications and uh, get our weather. I have this little sat phone that uh, Lori's father gave me before my 2011 uh, trip to Tahiti. And it's hooked into a little hand-me-down laptop uh, from Gordon Goldsmith. Um, I have free navigation software on there and the weather charts are, are all free. Here's an aerial shot, uh, Google Maps shot of uh, Rivavai. Uh, if it looks at all familiar, it's probably because you've seen an aerial map of uh, Bora Bora, and it's very similar. Large uh, main island in a protected lagoon uh, surrounded by uh, motus on a coral reef. Uh, very much like Bora Bora, it's still part of French Polynesia, but the main difference is Rivavai is undiscovered, and there are no tourists, no hotels, no restaurants. There's about 800 people on the island, and uh, we found three that spoke English. Here's a shot of Mokopea anchored uh, under uh, one of the motus on the windward side of the Rivavai Lagoon. You can see it's just a stunningly beautiful spot. Here's another shot of Mokupea at anchor in the lee of the Motu. We spent a whole day uh, messing around up here on the windward side of Rivavai, and we never saw another human being. Here's a video uh, I shot of our stay on Rivavai. Here comes Mr. Dyer on our bike ride around the island. Here we are at the very south end of Rivavai. Mokopea sailing around Rivavai Island. Notice how calm it is in the lagoon. What totally spot. protected from ocean swells. Here we are on the beach at the swimming pool Motu, uh, Rivavai. We're burning our garbage here because there's no disposal here in Rivavai. Beautiful Motu. Doesn't look like anybody lives here. I know it's privately owned, but I don't think anyone lives here. Oh, having a beer. We completed SOP1. Look at this Motu. Perfect uninhabited beach, no footprints, nothing. Beautiful lagoon. Here's the transition between the windward side of the Motu, all coral rubble, and the leeward side of the Motu, beautiful sand beach. It looks like some fishermen had set up a camp there or something. And looking into the lagoon at Rivavai. Beautiful the lagoon, look at this. And right in here, I don't know if you can see, right, you know, the fish are gone. There are a bunch of fish right in front of Matt here. Just cannot get over the beauty of this place. So, so beautiful. So empty. It's goodbye to Rivavai. It's about 5 p.m. on the 2nd of September and we are sailing away from Rivavai headed for Mo'orea. It was a good trip, wasn't it, Mr. Dyer? Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Rivavai. I recommend it to anybody. Oh, beautiful place, Rivavai. And we will miss it. And uh, if you can get here, that's right, very hard to get here. Aloha no, Rivavai. Here we go, off to Tahiti. Here's a chart uh, showing the Society Islands, just for a refresher. 
we made our landfall here on the eastern end of Tahiti Edi, uh, spent a night, uh, then sailed down to Point Venus, just east of Papieti, where we spent a second night, uh, then sailed over to Moorea, where we waited a few days uh, for Lori's flight to get in and uh, for Matt's flight to leave. It turns out he left and she arrived the same day. Then we sailed over to uh, Papieti, where Matt flew out and uh, Lori came in. After uh, cruising in Morea for a few days, uh, Lori and I then um, headed west, um, overnight sail to Huahini, and then spent the rest of our time in the Leeward Island groups of Huahini, Raiatea, Taha, and Bora Bora. Here's the lovely Lori Lloyd. Um, we're at anchor in Cooks Bay, and she's having on Moorea, and she's having her afternoon cocktail. We found a few spots uh, in the societies that we hadn't uh, seen on previous visits. This is a, a hike up to the top of uh, Magic Mountain there, just on the southern side of Oponohu Bay. You can see up here on the northern side of Opon Oponohu Bay, this is the very popular shallow water anchorage uh, where many of the boats uh, anchor. And here's some poor guy in Cooks Bay who dragged anchor in a little bit of a northerly wind that we had and ended up in the mud. There's nothing like a uh, Tahiti lunch of Hinano um, and baguette. When Lori was waiting for her flight down to Tahiti, she bumped into her old high school boyfriend, uh, Mitch Haney, and his wife, Jenna, who were heading down to Tahiti for their 30th uh, wedding anniversary. So we managed to uh, hook up with them in uh, Mo'orea and uh, take them sailing for a day. So here, here's uh, Mitch, Lori, and myself uh, sailing around uh, Oponohu Bay. Mitch even got to get in the water and swim with the dolphins that day. This picture kind of sums up cruising in French Polynesia. This is our favorite uh, anchorage in the Society Islands. This is Ha'ameni Bay in uh, Taha'a. And we've just come into the dock here on a Hinano run. You can see our empty case of beer there. We'll take that in, exchange it for a new one, and then we'll be good to go. Um, out there in the dinghy dock, you can just see Jules and Susie, uh, some friends we made down there off the uh, cruising uh, cutter Emerald Steel. My lifelong pal, Dave Schaefer, on the left in this photo, was supposed to join me in Tahiti when I was cruising down there in 1986. Uh, he was all set to come down and then a last minute work commitment uh, kept him from joining us. So this was like a do-over 30 years later. Uh, David flew into uh, Huahini and uh, got on the boat where Lori got off and David and I got to uh, cruise through the group for two weeks. Here's David and I at uh, Bloody Mary's on Bora Bora. It's Wednesday, our normal soulmate hiking day. And here we are on the top. So we went for a hike. And here we are on the top of the mountain in Bora Bora. I'm just looking south now towards the main lagoon of Bora Bora. Bloody Mary's restaurant, that's their pier out there on the, the mainland. Ahead of us here, To'opua Island. There's a cruise ship there in Vaitape, or anchored there between uh, Vaitape and To'opua. Mokupea, our boat, is anchored right down there in front of the motorboat that's moving. There's Mokupea. Here's the main entrance to uh, the uh, Bora Bora Lagoon. Out there, we came in there yesterday. Now we pan to the west and now to the north. You can see the Motus and the airport up there on the that most distance Motu. And that island way off in the distance there is Tupai, T U P A I, an atoll society. So we pan more to the northeast. We get to the resorts out on the Motus. First one is the which one, David? Its first one is the Four Seasons. 
where, where Josephine, David's wife, is staying, or David's going to be tomorrow night, and then the uh, St. Regis, and then one more, and the Meridian. And then right here in front of us is the highest peak on Bora Bora, enveloped in the clouds, and that one because of that vertical cliff around that has never been climbed. And this is pretty much as high as we can get. Top of the peak, Bora Bora, 2014. So after we get done climbing the peak, and, and here's the peak where I shot that video from right there behind David's head there. So after we climbed the peak, we took Mokopea out and we anchored her um, in the lee of the Four Seasons Resort. Here's David and Josephine at the Four Seasons. Um, I had four of the nicest days of my life there. They, David and Josephine adopted me and I, I went in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, for about four days. It was heaven on earth um, after uh, five months of boat food. Uh, so we had a we had a great time. It even got Josephine out to do some cruising in the Bora Bora Lagoon. Here's a shot of Mokopea um, anchored right there in the lee of the uh, Four Seasons Resort. This this was taken from one of the bars. After David left, I had a week of cruising by myself uh, while I waited for my daughter Kendra to arrive. Uh, she flew in, and she and I spent uh, a week. I'm exploring the uh, Taha'a, Raiatea, and uh, Bora Bora. We had a great time. Uh, here we are diving at the uh, Coral River on Taha'a. After a week of cruising with Kendra, my sailing buddy Tony Hoff arrived to help me sail the boat home. Uh, Kendra flew out, and Tony and I spent a few days exploring uh, Bora Bora. And then we took off, headed for Hawaii. Here's a shot of uh, Tony sitting on the bow of Mokopea as we headed home. Uh, here's a video I shot of our passage back from Bora Bora to Hilo. Mighty Mokopea, just after 8 a.m., 28th of October, 2014, departing Bora Bora, heading for Hilo. See Bora Bora fading in the distance back there. We are winds out of the north, unfortunately, but look at this day. It's gorgeous. It's supposed to come around to the east tomorrow. We may get here to where we can lay Bora, flop onto port, and do some easting. But boy, look at this weather. Got Tony on the bow there. The master is at work at his computer station creating his infamous blog that's now up to over 11,000 views. Oh, right on. Right arm. Right arm. Might as well go on a tour while we're at it. This is the captain's cabin. All what nice and dentist? neat. What? It's all nice and neat and organized. Nav station. This is a companion way up here so we're on the port side. Inline galley, very efficient. And up into the dark and foreboding forepeak. Lord knows what lurks up in here. And over on the starboard side just aft is the beautiful dinette, which hasn't really gotten used yet on this trip because we always eat out in the cockpit. After the dinette is the spacious and comfortable head. And Tony's messed up stateroom back here underneath the cockpit. Nice trade wind sailing at the moment. We're in day six. Got ourselves a little bit of breeze here. About 10 south. There was hardly any wind and all of a sudden the breeze came up out of the squall. I think we're just going into the equatorial countercurrent. Look at this. Guys, look at this. Look at this current line here. 
Look at this current line. Isn't that amazing? Here we are. We're at three degrees. Three, look, whoa, it just picked the boat up and it's, it's throwing us around. Look at this. We're at three degrees north latitude. Wow. That is a current line of all current lines. It's day 11. Got a fish line out. Mokopea is charging along. We're heading due north. You can see that squally weather. Big squalls everywhere. It's the end of day 13. It's going it's to be a gorgeous sunrise. We're at uh, just about 12 degrees north of the equator. Under power. It's day 17 on the mighty Mokopea. Heading for Hilo. Wind has come aft. And we're zipping along. Look how flat these seas are. We're in a southerly breeze that's going to be shifting to the southwest. There's a low passing to the north of us. And the Mokupea is blazing along. Heading for Hilo. You're not going to see this very often. Port tack running, heading north here, south of the Big Island. Very rare indeed. After 17 and a half days, we pulled into uh, Hilo Harbor, and uh, where Lori flew up to join us. And here you can see me greeting Lori on the beach there in Radio Bay, uh, where we relaxed for a few days and uh, visited friends, and uh, before heading heading back uh, west down the island chain. Um, Tony put together a great uh, little video of our passage from Bora Bora to Hilo. And if you go to, just type in Cueva Mokupea, like it's shown there on your Google, Google search engine, it'll bring up Tony's video. It's really well done. Our plan was to uh, island hop from Hilo back to Oahu. Um, but the weather turned junk and it looked like the cruising was going to be lousy. So Lori flew home and Tony and I decided we would uh, sail back in one quick hop. So after a couple days in Hilo, uh, we did. We left and a day and a half later arrived back in Kaneohe to a uh, wonderful uh, greeting by our friends. So ends the 2014 South Pacific cruise of the Mokupea, one of the best ever.